Now in this part of the problem, we're going to verify that the, uh, the difference from the outside to the inside perpendicular of a, uh, to the boundary of something that causes an electric field is equal to the ratio of the charge density and the permittivity of free space, and that difference points in the normal hat direction of the surface. Of course, this normal hat is directive. You can kind of switch these around if you want, and that'll change the sign of what you deem as uh, positive, either this is positive or this is positive, but we're just going to go and stick with this for now where this is in the positive direction. But the whole point is if you take the electric field right here, and you uh, find the difference of the electric field right here, you'll find that the difference, when, as you cross over this boundary of any sort of uh, threshold of, uh, or, or any sort of uh, boundary condition uh, for the something that causes an electric field, assuming that this is just a sheet right here, so this is there's no uh, charge here, there's no charge here, there's only charge right here, is so that difference when you make that hop across the boundary condition is always equal to this, and it always points in this direction. So we're going to prove that, or not, we're just going to show that with this uh, long uh, hollow tube right here. So the first thing that we're going to do is uh, find what the electric field on the outside is. And uh, we got, we're hinted to use Gauss's Law, and Gauss's Law is always really nice to use whenever you have symmetry. And of course, we used Gauss's Law a lot already, where you, if you uh, make a, uh, a Gaussian surface, do the outside right here. If you make a Gaussian surface on the outside, and you uh, the whole goal is to find symmetry and like that, so that... Um, these two are parallel to each other so that they, uh, the normal vector points in the same normal vector as this one. And the whole point is to make this dot product go into a multiplication. But again, that's uh, the chapter for Gauss's Law that we've done a while ago. And so um, what we can do is once we look at the Q that's enclosed, we know that the, uh, the charge that's enclosed is equal to the surface charge density that's enclosed times the area of our Gaussian or, or the area that's enclosed of the tube. And one thing I didn't mention is that this the tube has a radius of r, right? And that, that directly feeds into this because we have a surface charge density here. And then this area right here that's enclosed is equal to 2 pi big R, so the radius of the tube times L, where L is the, the length of our uh, Gaussian surface right here. And next, when we look at this one, uh, those just turn into multiplication so the magnitude of the electric field times the size of our Gaussian surface and the size of our Gaussian surface is equal to r little r that's our variable r where we can we can we're free to change the value of uh, little r as we want we can make this uh, Gaussian surface as big as we want as long as it's on the outside of the electric uh, of the surface charge density so this is 2 pi r times l and l can be infinitely long if you want but as you'll see in a second as we make this uh, substitution right here is that that'll end up be uh, not a factor because as you can see here the l's end up canceling out and so do the two pi's and whenever we solve for our electric field it equals this times the ratio of the two radii and then we tack on this s hat S hat being the uh, radially outward and cylindrical coordinates. You could do R hat, I guess, too, but uh, since I did use R here, but uh, you should, sometimes you just use S for uh, cylindrical coordinates. I'll just do with S hat for now. But that ends up being the electric field on the, uh, on the outside. And now, really quick, the electric field on the inside, if I can spell it correctly. The electric field on the inside, if we do Gauss's law again, And uh, let's see here, if I redraw my tube. Really quickly. Now if we make our Gaussian surface on the inside, that's a square, that is not symmetrical. Just a small Gaussian surface. We can see that the, uh, the biggest thing is that the charge that's enclosed is equal to, of course, the charge density that's enclosed times the area, but the charge density that's enclosed is equal to zero, right? There's Since this is a long, hollow cylinder, there's there's nothing on the inside right here. So we know that the electric field on the inside, and we can 
redo all of our math is equal to zero right here. So finally, going back to what the difference is, right when we meet this threshold right here, we know that the, uh, so at the boundary, at the R, R to big R boundary, if I can spell it correctly, whatever, boundary, uh, we can say that R is approximately equal to R, big R, right? That's to say that as we grow this, um, let's see here. So as we grow this Gaussian surface, so right when it hits this boundary, so we have a Gaussian surface right here and a Gaussian surface that's barely right there, we can, um, we can approximate those two. So right at that boundary, the electric field that's on the outside and the difference between that and the one that's right on the inside is equal to, and we'll just go ahead and take our two values here. So this one, of course, is uh, sigma epsilon naught and then r. And then little r becomes approximately big R at that boundary, minus zero, which is the electric field on the inside right here. And of course, what do we get? And there's an s hat right here. It's equal to sigma over epsilon naught pointing in the radially outward direction which is exactly equal to what we were trying to show in the first place here so it does check using gauss's law and for this uh, charge configuration here